The holiest of holies has bestowed upon me, a humble man, the ability to see here who is truly one with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The preacher boomed through the crumbling chapel. His audience was held in his gaze, listening with rapt attention. The preacher's sermons were never to be missed, in the most literal of meanings. To miss one was to be deemed a sinner, and sinners were given over to Annabelle. We have amongst us a heretic, a self-proclaimed man of science, who is trying to cure this plague of God. He believes that he can undo that which the Lord himself has sent the angels to smite the wicked with. The crowd shifted uneasily. They knew what was coming. Heretics were burned at the stake. They were treated like the witches of olden days. The preacher walked out from behind his podium, beginning to quote Revelations 21.8. But as for the cowardly, the faithless, the detestable, as for the murderers, the sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars, their portion will be in the lake that burns with fire and sulfur, which is the second death. With every word, his passion grew until he was shouting to the heavens with his hands raised. Behind him, a man was walking, bound and gagged. However, for some reason, he was smiling an eerie smile. As the congregation followed the preacher, they began to sing about how great is the glory of the Lord. Slowly, they made their way to where there was a giant circle in the middle of a dense forest. And in that circle was burned out area of vegetation where nothing grew. There, they saw the giant metal stake that all heretics were tied to and burned. A simultaneous shudder went through the crowd as the thought of the burning flesh went through their minds. But they could not argue with the preacher. He was their leader. And Annabelle was the ultimate punishment. She was, after all, the only asymptomatic carrier of the disease found. However, she could pass it on with a touch, a kiss, a sneeze, or a cough, and within 48 hours, you would be dead. The pastor loved using her, and the pastor loved her. So much, he made her his wife. Although, as far as the congregation could tell, it was sheerly a name only. Tie him to the stake, the preacher commanded from the crowd. Several people rushed in to do the bidding, and the man's grin grew wider as he began sweating profusely. Then, they placed the tinder and lit it on fire. It was only then that the preacher's eyes noticed that the man was laughing through his gag, as well as something else. The man was not wearing a shirt, and under his arms were black lumps. Disperse immediately, the preacher shouted. You three, he pointed at the ones who had trusted the scientist. Put him out, now. They looked confused, but did as the preacher instructed and used buckets of water they had brought for an emergency and put out the newly started flames. The rest of the congregation was in absolute pandemonium, running in every direction, unsure why the preacher had shouted to run, but were doing so at his instruction. Shut up, the preacher shouted, losing his composure for a moment. Everyone quieted down. If you have been in contact with the heretic, I want you to stay here, he pointed to a tree. It is time for a test of faith. It would seem our good scientist was infected all along. About five people stood by the tree, shaking wildly. If you do not show symptoms within the hour, you'll be free to leave. If you do... Well, we will leave you out here to suffer with the scientist. Your faith in God is not something that should come and go. The preacher went on with ferocity. His passion lit a different kind of fire while the rest of the congregation stayed as far away from the five people as they could. Slowly, one by one, they began coughing, until only one man remained standing. Ah, Simon! You're still standing strong. You may rejoin us. The man walked forward slowly with relief flooding his body. The rest of you must begin praying for forgiveness at this moment. We will pray that the Lord has not already turned his face from you, although 
I already believe it is too late. Goodbye. With that, the preacher and his followers turned and walked away, leaving the four people and the scientist behind. <laughs>